Draupadi Mehan was apprehended at 6.53 p.m. It took an hour to get her to camp. Questioning took another hour exactly. No one touched her. And she was allowed to sit on a canvas camp stool. At 8.57, Sena Nayak's dinner hour approached and saying, Make her. Do the needful. He disappeared. Then a billion moons pass, a billion lunar years, opening her eyes after a million light years, drop these strangely enough see sky and moon. Slowly the bloodied nail heads shift from her brain. Trying to move, she feels her arms and legs still tied to four posts. Something sticky under her ass and waist. Her own blood. Only the gag has been removed. Incredible thirst. In case she says water, she catches her lower lip in her teeth. She senses that her vagina is bleeding. How many came to make her? Shaming her. A tear trickles out of the corner of her eye. In the muddy moonlight, she lowers her lightless eye, sees her breasts, and understands that, indeed, she's been made a bride. Her breasts are bitten raw, the nipples torn. How many? Four? Five, six, seven. Then Draupadi had passed out. She turns her eyes and sees something white. Her own cloth. Nothing else. Suddenly she hopes against hope. Perhaps they have abandoned her for the foxes to devour. But she hears the scrape of feet. She turns her head. The guard leans on his bayonet and leers at her. Draupadi closes her eyes. She doesn't have to wait long. Again the process of making her begins. Goes on. The moon vomits a bit of light and goes to sleep. Only the dark remains. A compelled spread eagled still body. Active pistons of flesh rise and fall, rise and fall over it. Then morning comes. Then Draupadi Mehan is brought to the tent and thrown on the straw. A piece of cloth is thrown over her body. Then after breakfast, after reading the newspaper and sending the radio message, Draupadi Mehan apprehended, etc. Draupadi Mehan is ordered brought in. Suddenly there is trouble. Draupadi sits up as soon as she hears, Move! and asks, Where do you want me to go? To the Bala Sahab tent. Where is the tent? Over there. Draupadi fixes her red eyes on the tent, says, Come. I'll go. The guard pushes the water pot forward. Draupadi stands up. She pours the water down on the ground, tears a piece of cloth with her teeth. Seeing such strange behavior, the guard says she's gone crazy and runs for orders. He can lead the prisoner out, but doesn't know what to do if the prisoner behaves incomprehensibly. So he goes to ask his superior. The commotion is as if the alarm had sounded in a prison. Sinanayak walks out surprised and sees Draupadi, naked, walking toward him in the bright sunlight with a head high. The nervous guards trail behind, 
What is this? He is about to cry but stops. Draupadi stands before him, naked. Thigh and pubic hair matted with dry blood. Two breasts, two wounds. What is this? He is about to bark. Draupadi comes closer. Stands with a hand on her hip. Laughs and says, The object of your search. Dobdi Mehen. You asked them to make me up? Don't you want to see how they made me? Where are her clothes? Won't put them on, sir. Tearing them. Draupadi's black body comes even closer. Draupadi shakes with an indomitable laughter that Sena Naik simply cannot understand. Her ravaged lips bleed as she begins laughing. Draupadi wipes the blood on her palm and says in a voice that is as terrifying, sky splitting and sharp as a ululation. What's the use of clothes? You can strip me, but how can you clothe me again? Are you a man? She looks around and chooses the front of Sinanayak's white busher to spit a bloody cob at and says, There's not a man here that I should be ashamed. I will not let you put my cloth on me. What more can you do? Come on, counter me. Come on, counter me. Come on, counter me. Come on, counter me. Come on. Counter me! Come on! 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 Counter me! Draupadi pushes Sinanayak with her two mangled breasts. And for the first time, Sinanayak is afraid to stand before an unarmed target. Terribly afraid.